Today we're going to show you all of the steps involved in making a cyanotype print. We'll show you the history, science, and process involved, and we'll even show you how to make your own cyanotype at home. But before we get started, you may be wondering, what is a cyanotype print? A cyanotype is a blueprint. It's sometimes called sun printing because an image is produced on special paper using the sun's ultraviolet rays. Cyan is another word for blue. The name comes from the Greek, meaning dark blue impression. The process of making cyanotype prints was actually invented by an astronomer, Sir John Herschel, who lived in the mid-19th century. He used cyanotypes to reproduce notes and diagrams, but the process has been used for many purposes over the years. The first cyanotype we see is by botanist Anna Atkins. She would use the technique to capture images of plant specimens that she collected. Anna grew up surrounded by scientific innovators. She was friends with Sir John Herschel, and her father was a chemist, mineralogist, and zoologist. Anna's earliest book, Photographs on British Algae, is considered the first book to be photographically printed and illustrated. In it, she used specimens she collected herself or received from other scientists. Atkins made the plates by placing wet algae directly on light sensitized paper and exposing the paper to sunlight. She would also make prints of other plants and publish more books. This image from 1850 is of a fern from the British colony of Ceylon, which is present day Sri Lanka. She collected various fern specimens from her native England, as well as places like South Asia. Although Atkins' goal was really to accurately capture plant specimens, she paid really close attention to how her objects were arranged. The results are beautifully composed cyanotype prints. Once photography became more sophisticated, scientists no longer needed cyanotypes to capture and catalog their specimens. Even architects, who perhaps most famously use cyanotype blueprints, now use computers to aid in their designs. Today, artists carry on the tradition. One of those artists is Ryan McGinnis. McGinnis is a native Virginian, but now lives in New York where he also has a studio. He is known for brightly colored silkscreen canvases that are influenced by things like advertisements and street signs. He's also influenced by other works of art to create his prints. In the prints we see here, he looked at VMFA's collection as his source of inspiration and made these cyanotypes. McGinnis has a really interesting process. He sketches the objects in pencil, next he reworks the original drawing, then creates an ink drawing. This third drawing is scanned by a computer to create a digital representation of the drawing called a vector drawing. These cyanotypes are created from templates taken from the vector drawings. McGinnis prints the drawings onto transparent sheets and places them over cyanotype primed paper to expose them to the sunlight outside of his studio. The light activates the cyanotype, creating the image and subjecting each print to the weather and timing. He spent a lot of time arranging the objects from our collection, playing with size and scale to create his composition. He used images from so many different parts of our collection. In this one, the largest figure is a 19th century sculpture by the late 19th to 20th century artist Alphonse Mucha, with a mask from the Sanufo culture of West Africa right in the center. In this other one, the main figure is a Fayum portrait from Roman Egypt and there's an African stool from the Cuba culture at the bottom. There are so many different objects from our collection, it's fun to see if you can find them all and identify them. <laughs>